Hello friends, James Corbett here at CorbettReport.com. In case you hadn't noticed, I am back from vacation. And if you haven't noticed, why aren't you subscribed to the Corbett Report feeds at CorbettReport.com or become a member of the site at CorbettReport.com slash members. That having been said, this is another edition of Propaganda Watch. And this week, we're going to start by taking a little stroll down memory lane. Do you remember way back last summer when I warned about the internet censorship problem reaction solution? Do you not think that Zuckerberg and his pals are wetting their pants in anticipation of a government stepping in and declaring that Twitter and Facebook and what have you, these are now, these are now such important platforms that we must now, well, of course, acknowledge their monopoly status and then regulate them. They want this. They desire this. Oh, don't throw us in the briar patch and make us into the monopolies that we want to be. Well, for those of you who don't remember that or perhaps need a refresher, I urge you to go back and watch or rewatch or listen or re listen to that episode of the Corbett Report from last summer, where I make the case as cogently and as forcefully as I can that, of course, what the big tech monopolists want more than anything else is government to step in and intervene in order to cement their position as the monopolists of the new public square. Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, these are, this is the public square in the 21st century, and we must regulate them so that they play by the rules. And who will make those rules? Oh, I guess the Congress critters. Yay! Win-win for everyone, right? No, lose-lose for everyone. And if you need a refresher on why that is so, I wholeheartedly recommend that you go back to that Cor uh, Corporate Report podcast episode from last summer, where I make the point, because I realize it's counterintuitive and not a lot of people will be able to wrap their heads around it at first glance. But trust me, the big tech monopolists desire government interference in order to cement their position in the, the public square, the internet uh, space. So, case in point, people might have seen this just uh, a week or two ago just uh, as I was leaving on vacation. Mark Zuckerberg is begging for governments to regulate Facebook, says MarketWatch.com, or perhaps less clickbaity. Uh, the Hill writes that Zuckerberg, maybe tech should face some regulations. Facebook chief executive Mark Zuckerberg said on Wednesday that he's open to having his company be regulated. Actually, I'm not sure we shouldn't be regulated, Zuckerberg said in an interview with CNN, blah, blah, blah. Actually, I think the question is more, what is the right regulation rather than yes or no should it be regulated, Zuckerberg told CNN. Exactly the point, yes. I mean, of course, they want regulation to go a certain way, but given that, as we know, if you are a viewer of the Corporate Report, you know this by now, yes, the, the big tech giants, Facebook and, and Google and YouTube and, and Twitter and all of them are connected in behind the scenes to the U.S. government in various ways, overt and covert. So the idea that they are going to be steering the regulation that's going to be cracking down on them should give us all a bit of pause for thought as to, oh, why are they, why are they seemingly so on board with this idea of government regulation? It's, of course, because they're going to steer this regulation to make sure that competitors are pushed out of the marketplace. Bye-bye mines, bye-bye steam it, bye-bye bit shoot, bye-bye anything that could pose any sort of threat to their monopoly on the internet and the, the internet social media space. Another interesting case in point, just from the last couple of days, comes from CNBC, who put out this article, YouTube and its users face an existential threat from the EU's new copyright directive. And it's obviously talking about that new EU legislation um, that would, that is a very vague and amorphous language that the various EU states are now going to have to implement uh, into their own laws. We're going to have to enact laws to, to coincide, uh, coincide with it. And it will, in various ways, potentially make YouTube and other internet platforms responsible for pre-checking, essentially, uh, any copyrighted material that's uploaded to their platform. So not only are they like YouTube and everything scanning after the fact, they would be imposing various filters and checks, which would basically eliminate satire and news comedy and parody and various other completely fair use cases because 
the YouTube whatever is not going to be able to decide be beforehand. Um, they, they don't even decide after the fact, as you know by now. But anyway, let's get into the specifics of this article. Um, they're talking about a couple of creators who make their um, their livelihood on YouTube as TV and film reviewers and how this might affect them. And it says, like other content creators who have built brands and businesses on tech platforms like YouTube, they fear their livelihood and creative outlet could be threatened by a new copyright directive passed by the European Union in March. Under the new rules, which member states have two years to formally write into law, tech platforms like YouTube could be held liable for hosting copyrighted content without the proper rights and licensing. That's a big change from the status quo, which generally assumes platforms are not legally liable for their users' uploads so long as they take down infringing content once flagged. But according to the directive, companies like YouTube could soon be held liable unless they can also prove they made best efforts to get authorization for the content and prevent it from being shared without rights in the first place. YouTube and other tech platforms have argued that the only practical way to avoid liability will be to install even more restrictive content filters than the ones cur they currently have to prevent infringement. The EU directive does not require tech companies to do that, and it makes exceptions for using copyrighted material in parody or commentary, as would be the case in Jones and Bartley's reviews. But experts say, experts say, it will be difficult for platforms to create automated filters that can distinguish this context, at least at first. That could mean a channel like Nitpicks would have to avoid using any movie or TV clips in their reviews to ensure their videos uploaded to the site in a timely manner. Uh, Jones and Bardley, along with four other YouTube creators interviewed for this article, remain optimistic that the final version of the laws will be more flexible than the vague language of the directive, but YouTube isn't leaving things up to chance. Okay, so here's the context of what we're talking about, and oh, look at this existential threat to YouTube and its users. Look, they're coming after platforms like YouTube. See, the government's coming after them, guys. They're going to regulate them out of existence. But wait, there's an interesting little observation that this article makes that's buried deep down in the article you kind of have to dig for. So down here in the article, they're talking about the types of pre-filters and everything that will have to be instituted if the, this uh, law is enacted or these laws are enacted in a way that seems to conform to what we're talking about here. And you have Corinne McSherry, legal director of the Electronic Frontier Front Foundation, saying that even the YouTubes of the world will not be able to accomplish this task, leaving open the question of how up-and-coming platforms will tackle it. And then they get into entrenching large platforms. A key criticism of Article 17 of the EU Directive has been that it will further entrench large platforms' foothold in digital distribution dominance. The directive gives more leniency to companies with under 10 million euros in annual revenue with a product available to the public for less than three years, but legal experts say that in trying to get tech companies to pay their fair share for copyrighted content, the directive has created a new problem that only the tech giants can solve. A likely effect of Article 17 will be to entrench the exact tech giants that have been, everyone's been complaining about all the time. McSherry said, and it goes on to explain this in more de detail, but here is the point, here is the exact point of what I was saying last summer, and that I cannot believe more people are not understanding here. When you come in with these burdensome regulations, yes, the big tech giants will go, oh no, don't throw us in the briar, jack, briar patch, but they are able to do whatever, jump through whatever legal hoops and have their compliance officers and have their 18,000 programmers working on a solution for this. But think of the tiny upstart no-name platforms that y most people have never heard of, the libraries and the Steemits and the DTubes and the BitChutes and all of these little platforms that will have no chance of implementing all of these types of filters and whatever else will be needed in order to jump through all the regulatory compliance hoops. What does this do? It entrenches the very big tech giants as the only ones who will be able to compete in the space. Do you not see what is happening here? It's exactly what I was talking about, and it's exactly why now Zuckerberg and others are coming out and saying, well, we need some regulation, it'll be good for us. No, it will, yeah, it will be good for the big tech giants, precisely, because they are the ones in bed who are with the government, who are steering this legislation, who are going to make sure that it weeds out their competitors. And this isn't just something that applies to the 
internet space, although it clearly applies here too. It applies to all sorts of regulations on corporations. We're going to stick it to the corporations, guys. We're going to make all these burdensome regulations, so we're going to make sure we tightly control what happens and Oh, ultimately that ends up working in the favor of the corporations? How does that work again? Again, if you need more elaboration on this, I will point you to Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, Film Literature in the New World Order, episode 35, in which I elaborated on this and how Upton Sinclair and the expose of the meatpacking industry and the creation of the FDA actually served to uh, serve the interests of the meat packers, the large meat packers, it consolidated their control over the industry because they were the only ones able to meet the regulatory compliance. It's why they were the ones who were pushing for the regulations. It's counterintuitive, and that's why. It's a false flag in the corporate arena. Corporations, no, no, don't regulate us. Oh, oh, however will we uh, survive once we've been entrenched as monopolies in the space? Because our competitors literally cannot it cannot jump through the regulatory hoops. That's the point of this, and that's exactly where this is heading. And then uh, the end result of this is, oh, yay, now, now they have to play by the government's rules and give everyone a Twitter and Facebook account. Oh, yay, problem solved, guys. Do you really think this is how it's going to work? Anyway, again, I'm not to say I told you so, but I told you so, and here it comes. Get ready for it, and they're going to try as best as they can to eliminate any competition. Luckily, we are already moving onto the various platforms, IPFS and other types of decentralized web opportunities that are out there right now. And of course, then they're going to crack down on the ISPs. So we'll go to CubeSats and then they'll crack down on the CubeSats. So we'll find a different way around it. There are always ways, technical ways around the restrictions they're going to impose. And the real web, the free web, is always going to be two steps ahead of Normie land, where everyone's living on Facebook still. But, uh, and that's exactly how the internet was pioneered. It was pioneered largely by people who wanted that freedom, and they're going to have to explore new frontiers of the internet in order to find it, as increasingly the regulations start to come in and cement the monopolist's position of power. It's an extremely important point. It's one that we can learn a lot from. It's happening before our very eyes, and it's spilling forth through the news feeds right now. And as always, I'm going to be here covering it for you at CorbettReport.com. I hope you'll join me.